All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, Ryan, you there? Can you hear me all right? I'm here, baby. Let's all right. All right. So uh, it's a little later Wednesday night. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight, Ryan. We're going to probably wait another couple minutes and, and and we can just small talk for a second as we uh, wait for people to join us. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, perfect. Um, in Colorado, tell me real quick, do you mind before we get started here? To, uh, just just how was the Tim Tebow conversation? Oh, it was good, man. Tim, Tim is uh, everything that you think he is. Uh, he's, you know, it's always good, man. Cause I meet a lot of guys who, uh, <laughs> aren't the way they seem. Yeah. Uh, and it just is what it is. Unfortunate, but Tim is for sure. Um, the real deal. And I'm excited to have him come speak at WealthCon and get to film a podcast with him and get to know him on a much deeper level. So it's good, man. Yeah. He, he seems like the perfect like avatar for your audience and who you are and what you represent. So that's, that's, uh, that was probably a fun one. Yeah. No, we had a blast. I see we got uh, a lot of people here. Where's everyone from? I see Hawaii. I see Illinois. Illinois? Where are you from? Right now I'm in Colorado. Okay. We got Tampa in the house. You got some East Coast. It's 9 30 joining. That's dedication. I appreciate that. I know. I would, I just came from the East Coast. So I woke up at uh, 3 a.m. Pacific time today. I've had a long day. I'm what I'm curious about. So for everybody watching this, um, what do you guys do professionally? I want to know how many people are, you know, like in real estate, how many are, uh, you know, in other industries and careers. Real estate, real estate, all the real estate. Who's not in real estate? Healthcare. Healthcare. Cool. Pharmaceutical. Happily retired. Lloyd, what'd you do before you retired, man? Life you got insurance. life insurance. Okay. Santiago knows I don't like realtors. That's not a fair statement, guys. <laughs> I didn't like being a realtor because I sucked at it and I hate babysitting clients. So I got out of the babysitting industry is really what I got out of. What uh, I was, you know, who I was with yesterday, Ryan. I was with. Uh, I didn't know uh, you and him were so close. Uh, Todd Kruger yesterday. Out, Todd's uh, a man, dude. Yeah, good dude. I was out with Todd. He's, yeah, I think he's on listening to us tonight. I don't, I don't know if I saw his name on here, but uh, Todd's a stud, and uh, he uh, talks highly of you as well. We were just we were out in Dallas actually yesterday together. So, what are you guys doing? We were uh, helping a business owner out there. We were helping him with his, he, he bought a business about 13 months ago and was uh, needed a little help. So Todd and I flew out there and met with him and actually Kent Clothier. So we were out there for the day and uh, it was fun. In fact, you know, I, Kent went to the Rangers game. You're a baseball guy. And we're going to start here. Like, we'll give us one more minute. He said something I thought you you might have heard of. I thought was really funny. He said uh, the Rangers won. He's a big Rangers guy. And and he, he said they beat the Rays, the Who's who is next? The A team, Rays, um, Astros, Orioles, Astros, Diamondbacks, R A O D. They won them all on the road. Wow, <laughs> Ken was pumped about that. Ken went to the game, the a couple of the games out there. So, um, I know you're a big baseball guy. Were you surprised the Rangers winning? Uh, I mean, they were good all year. I mean, they were like. They, they had a, they weren't as good the second half, but uh, I mean, they're so freaking talented. I mean, they had, yeah. Yeah. they're just good. And they did it without their best pitcher. They didn't even have DeGrom. So mm -hmm. that's crazy. All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, I think we waited long enough. I know we got also usually the next day after um, we send out this recording and, um, and just as many people listen to it. So um, first and foremost, I wanted to um, get started and say thank you for joining us later tonight. Uh, this has been a big deal for our Horizon Trust Company clients. A lot of you listen in and have asked me to bring on guests and people who are successful that have been using their retirement account 
and and how they're using it and just some success stories. And you've heard some of those. We've actually had some oil and gas guys come on. We've had real estate guys come on. Um, and, and, and today, super excited to have Ryan on. Ryan has done, as most of you know, um, he's, he's dabbled, I feel like in lots of different places, as far as investing goes, not just in real estate. In fact, I see you talking about different businesses all the time and using your self-directed IRA. I think that's one of the unique things about you is there's very few people. When you and I started talking about self-directing, you're like, oh yeah, I've done that. I've had an account for like, I don't know how many years, five, six years. And there's not very many people that I know that are investing in alternative assets that have had a self-directed IRA. So um, so we started doing this about four months ago where we started bringing on guests to talk about their successes and what's working. One thing that I'm not only excited about to have Ryan on, Ryan on today is to hear kind of his story and, and introduce you to a lot of you are, are clients of ours at Horizon Trust. A lot of you also um, are clients and or friends or followers of Ryan uh, and might not know who I am. We focus our company on helping people unlock their retirement account and use it for kind of whatever they want. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail, but we are, we've been doing it for 14 years. Uh, many of our clients uh, have asked for people like Ryan. And one thing that I'm excited to hear about with Ryan today is he also is going to share with a way that you can either partner or invest with him as well, which um, we've always had people come on. And I, and I do have to put out a disclosure here before we get started, before Ryan even does an intro, um, is, uh, is look, we are not at Horizon Trust Company. We are not a fiduciary. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an attorney. Um, I'm going to interview and I'm going to ask questions and, and, and get to know what Ryan has done uh, and what he's up to right now and share it with you. But we're never going to get compensated for any decisions you make on where you want to invest your funds. We've got now almost 7,000 investors at Horizon Trust Company. Um, we've got over a billion dollars of people that are investing in different assets. We're very proud of that, but we're still a very small boutique firm. Um, it's really important to us that we help educate you and give you the tools you need to start looking at kind of what you, you know, unlocking your retirement money. So with all that being said, and with that little disclaimer of letting you know that, you know, we are not a fiduciary, we're not going to make decisions on your behalf. That's all the legal stuff. Let's get rid of that, uh, Alex. And uh, let me introduce you, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, first, for I know probably at least half of the people listening today and also probably tomorrow know who you are, but the other half are clients of ours who, you know, might not know who you are and kind of your story. So would you mind starting kind of just, just give a little background about Ryan? Yeah, I'll give you guys the couple minute version. Um, you know, I've been in real estate now since 2010. Uh, somebody had mentioned I don't like realtors, which isn't true. I started out as a realtor in 2010 and I just sucked at it. So I don't like things that I suck at. And uh, I also didn't realize, you know, I was 21 back then that it was the toughest time to be a realtor in 2010. You know, prices were at all time lows. No one had money. Great time to be an investor in hindsight, but terrible time to be a realtor. And uh, I just got tired of it. So um, eventually I ended up finding my way back to real estate about five years later, but this time in house flipping. And so 2015, I started flipping houses and um, linking up with, you know, guys like Greg who had money and they started funding uh, hard money loans for me. And that's how I got started. You know, I maxed out all my credit cards and just went for it. And it worked, you know, fast forward a few years later, um, I was flipping a hundred homes a year. And I think to this point we flipped over 600 homes and, you know, at this point too, we have over 550 rental units under management, um, between my fund with multifamily, you know, we've got Airbnb single families. Um, I've pretty much invested in every asset class you can imagine. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the career on the real estate side on, the other business venture side, done a lot of different things. Um, a lot of people know me on social media. I've gotten over a billion views online. That's with a B. And, you know, we, we've we just made a lot of content and, you know, people like it. So, you know, it's gone well. And that's led to lots of opportunities with other businesses. Um, you know, we've got a really big education business for, you know, teaching people real estate investing, uh, specifically flipping and wholesaling and, you know, just buying single family rentals. We, you know, teach people how to do social media and, and build their personal brands and, you know, generate leads for their business. And, you know, there's just a number of things I've done over the years and um, I'm just happy to be here. Well, well, look, I, one, one thing that, well, there's, there's, there's several things that resonate with me when I hear you speaking or see 
you know, I, I feel like I've seen you in a lot of different stages in social in different social media platforms, but but the the common thing that that I hear and I feel like you do a great job of is is showing people how to start with very little because mm -hmm. I feel like in today's world, social media is like, yeah, you can buy this hotel or you can do this, you know, this huge two million dollar, ten million dollar deal, and and it's, which is true by the way, um, but a lot of my, you know, my listeners and, and a lot of my investors as well, you know, they're like, look, I got a hundred thousand dollars or I got $50,000 in my IRA or whatever the case is. I just want to do this small little deal or this small little business. And I, I think one thing that resonates that I see you, you talking about all the time is how you've, I mean, I think I've seen you talk about flipping furniture, right? I mean, um, is that true? Right. Haven't, haven't I seen you say something about that? I mean, so, and, and, and let's just take that example. It might be a silly example, but if it's a, is that fair? Did, have you, I think you said that, correct? Yeah. You know, somebody said I'm the, the top couch flipper of all time. Chris said it. <laughs> I, uh, like I said, I've done a lot of businesses, man. Like I'm, I'm open and willing to try anything, you know, like I, before I started flipping houses, I was just hustling and I just had this idea one day. I was like, I bet you I could flip couches. Um, you know, my, cause the, the way it started was my wife and I got married and we were super young and broke and I bought all of our furniture on Craigslist and I spent like a thousand bucks to furnish the whole thing. And I looked around, and I was like, I bet you I could flip this stuff for like three grand. And at the time I wasn't making three grand, you know, I was like, that's pretty good money. And it didn't take me long to do this. So I tested it and sure enough, it became a business. And, you know, in due time, I was making 10 grand a month, like just flipping couches and it was crazy. And, you know, that just led to the next business thing. And then you know, like even other things I've done, like I started a real estate brokerage and, you know, we had 200 agents. So I, I know real, the real estate agent industry pretty well too. And I ended up getting rid of it just because I realized I didn't really like it or I wasn't passionate about it. And, you know, I started a CPA firm that I actually recently just exited. Um, so I love just start, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I love real estate. I love entrepreneurship, but really I would say I'm an opportunist whatever I think is like the best opportunity at that time, then, you know, I'm going to try and see if I can do it. Well, look, I, I bring up the furniture example. And I think someone even said on here, they flip shoes from Ross. I think I saw that. I mean, look, let's just take, let's just, just, I'm going to break down kind of this subject as, you know, today we're, we, I am I'm particular wanted to have Ryan come on and talk about some up and coming things he's working on. Um, some opportunities actually to invest with Ryan, which we're going to get to in a minute. But also for those of you that are like, hey, look, this sounds great, but I'm just starting out. Um, how does this work? And so let's just take the furniture or the shoe example. So if you're in this boat of like, hey, look, I I I want to I want to make money but not pay taxes on some of these other ideas. Like let's say you're a school bus driver, or a teacher, or whatever you might be, and that's your full-time job that pays your bills. But you want to start something flipping the shoes at Ross. You can you can actually start and open up an LLC and have your IRA, a self-directed account, which is we'll talk about here a little bit more in a second, fund your LLC that flips shoes or that flips furniture. And then that LLC can go and buy and sell shoes or furniture. And in return, all the profits that are made with just that simple thing, that $1,000 of furniture that maybe your IRA bought and flipped for three, you don't pay any taxes on if you're using a self-directed IRA. And so I want to share that example and why it resonates with me is because you are the king of this. You are showing, you're doing it yourself and you teach people how to do it. And I think the the, the next step for individuals that I, I try to share is, how would you like to do what Ryan just said, but not pay taxes um, or, def or, or defer paying taxes until, you know, later on down, down the line. And, and this is probably the reason why we also talk about this is many of many that are listening um, probably have an old 401k. In fact, I mean, just, just as I'm talking here, do you, does anyone here have an old 401k from a previous employer? If you want to say yes, put a one in the, put a one in the chat. If you guys got a 401k right now. Yeah. For, yeah. There's I mean, I mean, th th there's there's over 30 million 401ks that are dormant, meaning 401ks that from people have already left their employer, which means they're sitting there and you are able to unlock and use for anything pretty much that you want. So there's also over 97 million IRAs in the United States. So those two numbers, old dormant 401ks combined with IRAs, there's over 130 million retirement accounts, and that's over $13 trillion. So 
So I share this with you because you know all those ones that came up, and there's probably lots more. Many of you fit in that number. Many of you did not know that you can actually use your old 401k, you or your spouse's old 401k from your previous employer, and actually self-direct it, unlock it, and invest in what you know and understand. And so, uh, Ryan, I talked about this actually for a minute earlier today. What what does that mean? What you know and understand? It could be cryptocurrency. It could be it could be uh, real estate. It could be businesses. Um, I, someone invested in an ice rink. Um, we already talked about furniture. I think someone said shoes. Um, so, I wanted I wanted to make sure that for those of you listening that have an old four hundred one k. Um, and I, I think on purpose, uh, my staff put this here up on the side, and, I, and I'm going to go back to this a few times before Ryan kind of talks about some things he's got going on. Um, we have a place where you can set an appointment. So throughout while we're talking here, it says horizontrust.com uh, forward slash Ryan P right there. This is this is our joint podcast that we want to webinar that we wanted to share for those of you individuals that want to learn how to use your retirement account and basically Transfer it over so you can access it to invest in what you know and understand. Set an appointment. There's no crazy hard sales pitch. There's no give us your credit card. None of that. We're going to teach you actually how to just move over your account, unlock it, and invest in what you know and understand. It's what we do. We've been doing it for 14 years. And this is one of the main things people are asking me. Now that I know I can unlock it, what do I do next? And so, Ryan, what would, would you share? Maybe I mean you've been doing this for a while. So, what what are one a couple of the things you've done with your self directed IRA? Yeah, so I think there's two things here, and you guys are gonna start hearing me talk a lot about getting money out of 401ks and going self directed. Um, I haven't talked about it a lot on social media at all, um, just because you know at the end of the day, like. I've been busy trying to teach people how to make money and it's never really crossed my mind that, Hey, there's a lot of people who've like got money locked up right now that could be amplifying their business. It could be start. You could be starting a business. You could be investing with someone, you know, like it's just not doing anything. And so I, it it just dawned on me one day. I was like, man, that's the key. Like a lot of these people are missing is just Mm -hmm. like, they're like, I don't have any capital. And then I'm like, well, do you have a 401k? And like, yeah, but I can't, I can't touch it. And I'm like, well, you actually can, you just don't know how. And, you know, so that's why we're doing this now. And um, I think a lot of you guys are going to be able to, uh, you know, really have your eyes open to what's possible. But for me, um, I never had a job. So, you know, having a, a 401k wasn't really in the mix for me. And I never really thought about it. And so, I got started in the self-directed IRA game um, because I wanted to avoid taxes. That was it, right? It wasn't like I was forced to, I was just like, hey, what's the best way to start lowering my taxes? To be honest, I never cared about retirement. I was like, I'm just going to make money. It ain't going to matter to me. But I was just looking at it from a tax savings perspective. And so in like 2017, that was the first year I started making money where I started worrying about taxes. I made about 750 grand that year. I was like, dang, I got to pay a lot of taxes. I've never like made that much money. Like it's cool, but man, that's a, my first six figure bill. And they're like, well, you know, you can start doing these different things. And so I uh, opened up a SEP IRA and I'm not saying that this is the best one by any means. Like everybody's got different situations. I'm sure Greg will talk about, you know, the difference between pre-tax money and post-tax money. Um, But for me, I was worried about just, getting deductions. Um, and so I opened up an IRA where, you know, basically allowed me to take like a 50 grand deduction that year and Mm -hmm. put it towards the SEP IRA. So I did that. Then, um, I just kept contributing 50 grand towards it. Um, the next couple of years, cause that was around the max. It was like 54,000 something. And, um, you know, sure enough, I had this nest egg of, you know, 150 something grand and I was investing in my own flips with it. So, you know, I started using it um, for my own flips. And then around 2020, we all know COVID hit. And look, I am not a stock expert, but I saw the stock market crash and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't believe in COVID. So I'm like, I'm just going to go buy a bunch of stocks. And so I just bought like Tesla and companies that I actually just was like, this is a good company. There's no way it's worth this. And then sure enough, I basically doubled my stock portfolio in like a quarter. And I was like, 
I guess I'm a, a stock investor now. No, that, that wasn't what happened. I ended up, um, you know, taking the money from that. And then at that point, I just went back to real estate. And now my, my SEP IRA just invests is in my fund. So, you know, I put it in my multifamily deals and, um, you know, that's what I've done to this point. And so it just keeps growing and growing and, um, you know, it's great with, with that one. But now as I've gotten older and I've kind of gone down like the other route, I see why now people do post-tax money. So I was using pre-tax money. Um, the beauty of post-tax money is that, you know, the money grows now and you don't pay any tax on it, you know, when you start receiving it. And so if you're expecting it to grow very large, then, you know, post-tax is a great way. So, um, you know, I, I've done it a lot of different ways and I continue to look at just different ways you can, you know, minimize your taxes and, and grow wealth tax-free. And so I think with your SEP IRA, um, well, not SEP, but any self-directed, there's, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, I think it's great. And I think if you have a 401k that you got from an employer that you don't control, whether you ever invest it with me or in your own business or anything, it should not be in a 401k. Like there's literally no reason your money should be in a 401k. You should have control over it. And, you know, self-directed IRAs allow you to do that. So that's my experience. Yeah. And look, and, and, and one thing, I'll, well, a couple of things I'll share is, is well, for those individuals that want to start with a Roth, which I think is what he's talking about, post-tax dollars. If you, if you foresee that you're going to make some big gains, like the Tesla thing, right? Or anything, right? a new business. If, if you pay the taxes now and then put your money into a Roth, all of those gains grow tax deferred and come out tax free. That's what's powerful, but you don't get the tax benefit today, which is why at the time when Ryan was funding his account, he was doing a SEP or a traditional. And so when he put those 50, the 50 grand in, it was then, it was, at, it was um, after tax dollars. Um, so he, he had um, put up the money. And so therefore he didn't have to pay taxes on that $50,000. So this, the, as far as what type of retirement account that is right for you, we'll help you answer that question. I, I, I thought I'd share with you as well as I got into self-directing the other way. I didn't have any money similar to you, Ryan. Um, and for the first four years of my career, I couldn't open up a retirement account. Um, I was having babies quicker than I was building a business probably at that <laughs> time. And so yeah. I was like, just, just trying to build the business, but I, I, I couldn't re I, I was looking for equity for my deals. I was looking for partners. And so when I learned about self-directing, I was like light bulb on there's, you know, a hundred million at the time, I didn't know there's that many people. There's people all around me that have retirement accounts that could potentially be my business partner. And so for those of you that are listening to this, they're like, Hey, look, this sounds great, but maybe I'm too new. Um, you, if, if, if you know somebody that has a retirement account then can help you syndicate a bigger deal. I mean, Todd's a great example of that you and I both know Todd, I've done a couple of storage facilities and Todd's listening, I'm sure today. And, you know, when Todd is going to go fund a storage facility and it's $2 million, but I only have 500,000 or $100,000. Me and 10 of my closest friends can all put in 100, 200,000 dollars with all of our different IRAs and get that whole $2 million to fund a deal and syndicate a deal. And so if you're in that boat, if you're looking for a partner, um, if you're looking to syndicate a deal or you have no money, you actually can borrow and or leverage or partner with other people. So when I was in my early 20s and, I, and a bank wouldn't lend me money, I found individuals that, and that's how I actually learned about self-directing before I even owned a, a IRA company. And so, um, but but that's for some of you that maybe have never, uh, don't have funds for an IRA, but for those of you that do have an IRA, don't be, um, don't be afraid to actually um, partner up with a couple individuals to go out and do your first deal. You can do a deal with your $10,000 IRA. I think a lot of people think they they can't move over their 401k because maybe it's only $15,000. And they're like, you know what? What can I do with $15,000? A lot. Uh, in fact, one thing, Ryan, is people can also open up a 401k, a self-directed 401k. Um, and that's that's something that is is not your traditional marketplace 401k, where you can put up $62,000 into a self-directed 401k. You can borrow from it to pay off expenses up to $50,000, um, or you can also just invest it in whatever you want. And so um, we've got investors that are having all kinds of different types of retirement accounts, from Roth to Simple to SEP to 401k. 
Our job, Ryan and I's job is not to tell you which type of account's right for you. Um, set an appointment. We'll talk to you. We'll help you get your account set up with us. Uh, and from there, we're it, you're in control. You get to make decisions of what you're going to invest in. And uh, kind of speaking of that, if it's okay, uh, I, I don't want to, I, I want to make sure we have enough time for this, but Ryan, can we talk a transition a little bit? We'll go back to IRAs and self-directing uh, here in a minute, but um, can we talk about um, self-directing and, and in particular your fund coming up? And, and to kind of preface this, let me just share with you that many of my investors, or I should say uh, account holders, love the idea of self-directing, but they got full-time jobs or they're flipping real estate, very active, and they want that money to go back into the pocket. They're, they're not trying to defer taxes. Um, investing in a fund, I would say most of our investors with their IRA are passive investors. They're using their IRA in a passive way, meaning they're syndicating and partnering with somebody else. I use my IRA to lend to people. I'm that person that someone was for me 25 years ago. When someone lent me their money and I, you know, they just gave me a, I gave them a percentage of the deal. That's what I do now with my IRA. That's what I prefer doing. Cause I have other things going on, other businesses that I focus on. And so if I'm able to put part of my IRA with somebody or an individual that I trust, uh, uh, that I trust really well, uh, that's what I prefer doing with my IRA, making it very passive and not paying the taxes. And so Ryan, I know you've done you've done a lot of deals. I think didn't you mention before as as far as transitioning into kind of this new fund you've got? I wanted you to introduce kind of to this group. Uh, you you've you've borrowed, you've paid on on how much uh, how many loans have you done in your in your career now? Yeah, I was actually having the team look that up the other day. Um, in almost ten years of my real estate investing career, I've paid back over a hundred million dollars of loans. So. We've borrowed a lot of money over the years and it's been great for, you know, not only myself, but obviously the investors and, you know, I want to borrow a billion dollars. I mean, that that's the goal, right? Just keep borrowing and keep winning and, you know, everyone wins. So, so tell me, so Ryan, I, I, you've been doing this for a, a long time and you've, you've taken your hits and you've failed and learned from those things or else you wouldn't be so successful. I know that. So um, you, you've now launched a few new things and businesses and uh, you, it was good timing uh, as far as us talking today. I believe you've just launched a fund, correct? Yeah, so we we syndicate on a deal-by-deal -deal basis um, for all of our apartment buildings. And uh, right now we've got a deal in Iowa that is really interesting um, for a few reasons. I'll share my screen real quick. Um, but, you know, we, we've got this deal in Iowa. It's 132 units. Just to give an example of the things that you can invest in um, from a passive perspective. So right now at Pineda Capital, we've got 667 units. So I forgot we added this one already. So it's actually more than the 550 I said earlier. Uh, majority of our deals are in Iowa. We've got one in Georgia as well. And, you know, the cool thing with this deal is we already own it. So this is what we would call a backfill deal where, you know, I've got other types of money. Maybe they're short-term bridge debt. Maybe it's you know my own money that I put in short-term that could have came from my own self-directed uh, just to get the deal done. And then we go and backfill it because we want to just maybe we're under the gun. We got to buy it right now to get the you know to get it, and then we'll figure out how to fill the rest. And so with this one, um, you know, we already bought it for a little over ten million bucks, and we've got a million bucks to raise still on the backfill. And, you know, this one, we've got an 18% targeted um, IRR. So at the end of the day, if everything goes to plan, which it's already exceeding the plan, actually, um, you know, you should make 18% year over year. Now, the thing you need to know with real estate syndication is that you're not making 18% every year, every quarter. The majority of your return is when the property sells. That's how it works. And so... You know, if you're looking for like, oh, I'm going to get 18% cash flow, that's there's not many things, period, that that do that. Okay. All of your money and in most investments is made on the exit. Um, but that being said, it's just a very good deal. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful Sorry, let me property. Real quick, Ryan, yeah. back on this slide. Yeah. The, I yeah. think the reason why this is so, it, it works so well with people with IRAs is. They don't need the income. Why? Because most of you that are investing with your IRA, you can't touch it anyway. So if yep. it's back ended and you're getting your most of your gains in years two, three, four, and five, 
or three, four, and five, it's okay because really you can't touch it anyways. And so that's what's I think what's great about using your IRA for these passive deals that are a little bit longer term. They have a little bit more upside. Yeah, I forgot to even mention that. Yeah, for um, you know an IRA, right? You're not touching it until retirement. So to you, it doesn't matter whether it cash flows or not. It's just simply what's getting the best return year over year. Um, and so really. You know, you have two options when you're looking at investing with an IRA. You know, do you want to do it yourself or do you want to just do it passively, right? Right now, you've had it passive this whole time. You know, if you were in a 401k and, you know, it's not doing anything, you're used to it. So then it's just a matter of, well, man, what what is my 401k been doing all these years? Like, is, is it getting 3%, 4%? What is it doing? You know, you imagine if it was getting 18% the whole time. I don't know what the math would be. Uh, over the span of 50 years, but it'd be insane. You're talking millions and millions of dollars of difference, um, you know, by picking the right deal versus not. But anyways, um, this this deal in Iowa is amazing. I, I personally went there myself. Um, maybe the team can grab my YouTube channel and just uh, put the link in. If you just search Ryan Pineda, Iowa, you'll see uh, a recent video where I walked this property. And um it's going great. We're like I said, we've already owned it for six months, and it's already exceeding rent expectations. Um, you know, so people it's, can invest. People can use their IRA right now and be in this deal. Is that what you're saying? Yep, yep. So people can get in this deal right now. Um, we bought this deal over here last year next to the University of Iowa. It's already exceeded expectations. It's ninety nine percent occupied. There's literally nothing for rent. Um, <laughs> this one was an interesting deal. Because it's like my house flipping days. Um, is this one was literally zero percent occupancy? It was condemned. It was literally you could not go in it. The city was like, dude, we're gonna like burn this place to the ground if nobody does anything to it. We're gonna bulldoze opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and so we worked with the city. Um, we got the. We literally bought this this one right here for like twenty seven thousand dollars a unit. It was crazy. And, uh, you know, the renovation costs more than what we bought it for, but we ended up getting literally all of them fixed up, fully occupied. We just refinanced. And so we got a bunch of the investors capital back and we actually put it into this deal. So that's the cool thing with like, even what's happening now is like, we bought this deal a year and a half ago, already refinanced, got some of the capital back. And most of those investors said, cool, I'll just double down and I'll put that capital I got already back in this deal. So now the same capital is in two deals. So really cool um, on that front. So yeah, like, you know, that that's, that's just one way that you guys can um, invest passively. And for this one, you do got to be an accredited investor. Um, so, you know, credit is you've got to be making, well, you can have a million dollar net worth or you've got to basically have made 250 grand in the last two years. That's what an accredited investor is. Um, but yeah, this is, I, I love Iowa. Iowa has treated us really good. Every single deal has crushed it. And, you know, it, it, from a perspective of, I guess, risk, there's always risk in any deal, guys. Okay? So I'm not here to tell you there's no risk. But the fact that this one's already purchased and exceeding expectations, like, the risk profile is way different versus when you buy <laughs> like this one, which had 0% occupancy and you just are like, hopefully they get it fixed up because if they don't pretty much it was a waste. Um, so yeah, very different. Well, well, I feel like that's how most people are right now when they invest in the stock market. It's like they, they're hoping and praying. You put in your money because you, you know you've been, your great grandparents have been doing it their whole lives and your parents are doing it. So we follow the same mold. We put money in and this random stocks or you know, what's your scale of, 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 of adversity, right? From one to 10, you're like, oh, I'm a six. And then they just plug your money into something. You don't even know where it's invested. And so, you know, if, if you find yourself, you're listening to this, you're like, hey, look, I have an old 401k or have an IRA that's just sitting there. It's not, it's not performing or it's just doing these ups and downs and you're celebrating these wins, but really all your wins are getting back your losses. And so yeah. if, if, you, if you if you found, if you find yourself there um, to, it, and you want to take control of your money, this is the absolute best way. And, and there's only 5% of Americans that do self-directing. 
And I, and I believe that there are two main reasons for this is one, most people don't know they can move their IRAs or their old 401ks. And number two reason is they shouldn't do it. A lot of Americans should not be self-directing. Why? Because if you're not going to take the time or energy to be on a call at 10 p.m. Eastern time, listening to us and learning and or getting content, it's probably not for you. You should keep doing what you're doing. But for those individuals that want to take a little action, and when I say a little bit of action, this is like a half an hour a month. Like literally, if you can put five hours a year into your future and earn an extra two or 3%, what I liked about Ryan's is even though 18% is, is incredible, um, but what, I, what I've seen is if you can get constant 10 or 12s and not experience the negative 10 or 20s that happen every four to five years, you're, you're going to be way ahead of others, literally millions of dollars ahead of others just by getting consistent returns in, in collateral assets. So, yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you guys too. So um, a couple of things I, I, I see on the, the chat here. So somebody's like, hey, like what is an accredited investor? Why do you need to be accredited? So anytime I do deals two different ways, just so everyone knows. One is, you know, I'll market it to the public. If I market it to the public where everyone can see it, um, it ends up having to be accredited for the most part in the way I do it. And to be an accredited investor, you either have to have a million dollars of net worth, right? And, you know, we have a third party company that verifies this, or you had to have made 250 grand the last two years in a row in income. So your tax return has to show you made 250. Um, or a third way is you and your spouse combined had to have made 300 grand the last two years. Those are how you become an accredited investor. Um, so, you know, if I market a deal like this, it's accredited. Um, that being said, for those of you who are not accredited, okay, there's two things I would say. And this is not like me giving financial advice. This is just me telling you about options. Um, one is we do do deals with non accredited Okay, there's another type of um, syndication, uh, 506B, where we can do deals with non accredited as long as I don't publicly market it and I have a relationship with that person. So what a lot of our investors do is we have relationships with them prior to a deal. And so I'll get a deal like this and I'll say, hey, I'm not even going to publicly talk about this. I'm going to just fill it with people that I know, my friends, my students, people in my community, and we'll just go do the deal together. I don't even need to publicly market it and I can take non-accredited. Um, so to that end, if you're non-accredited and you can't get in on this deal, I would still say um, get, you know, if, if you're going to do go through this self-directed process, do it. And then let's build a relationship. You know, my team will 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 talk to you. We'll build a relationship so that we can start doing deals together, even if you're not accredited. Um, so that's that's one thing. Okay. The second thing is, look, if you're not accredited and maybe you're not making a lot of money right now, um, but you do have a retirement account. You know, to me, I'm like, all right, well, time to learn some skills. Time to start a business. Right. Um, the only way you're gonna you know, create financial freedom is not by, you know, having a little bit of money and then just hoping you hit the lottery, right? And find like the next big investment and, and all this stuff. No, you're gonna have to learn skills. And like so somebody asked this in the chat and I don't know the answer, Greg, maybe you do. They said, could I invest in my own education um, with a self-directed IRA? And that's something I never even thought about too, because like, you know, we've trained thousands of students to create their own business, right? To go flip houses and wholesale and, um, you know, start creating income, start making that 250 so you can be accredited one day, right? And, you know, you're probably not going to go make 250 at your job for most W-2 people. You're going to have to create your own business if you want to make over 250 each year. And so for me, you know, flipping, wholesaling, those are all great ways to start making over 250 each year. And um, we can certainly help you do that too. But I don't know if you're able to like do your self-directed into education, things like that. Greg, you would know. Yeah. So, so there is a way of doing it. If you, if you are starting a new business um, and you create that business, you can also create a 401k for your business. This is where the self-directed 401k comes into play. If you create a self-directed 401k for your business and fund it, 
then you can there, therefore take a loan out against your 401k to pay for education or anything, frankly. And so the reason why this does apply, and I think it's a critical, is I find some people get so frustrated with their 401ks or retirement accounts that they don't know this option. So instead they cash it out. They're like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to pay for my education. I'm going to put it in the business. So they cash out the retirement. They pay a penalty in taxes. So they lose 30, 40% and then end up with, you know, 60% when they didn't have to do that. All you had to do is start an LLC, fund your self-directed IRA, and then once your money gets there, fund your new LLC. And now you can, you can have a 401k. And once you have that 401k self-directed, you can borrow against it and pay off education, pay off a credit card, whatever it may be. And that's the one thing I also share with, uh, with many people is on this subject, people get excited about it. They're like, I can't wait to self-direct. I'm going to find a deal. When Ryan has that next deal for me, I'm going to build a relationship. That's the wrong process. Um, if anyone knows this, probably Ryan knows this the best. Some of the best opportunities come and go quickly. So if mm -hmm. you have a self, if you have an IRA, let's say at Charles Schwab or Fidelity, and you're like, hey, look, I'm going to do this thing once I find a deal. Well, the process, just so you know, and, and we are the fastest in the industry, it we it takes us two to three weeks, typically two, to get your money from wherever it's at to our company. So what I tell most people, if you're going to start self-directing and looking for opportunities to either wholesale, partner, syndications, a fund, et cetera, if you know you're going to do it, get your IRA set up, get it funded, which takes two weeks, get your money there. And now you have kind of a bank account, right? It's sitting at, it's basically sitting at title at trust with us for, and we're there to wait for you to tell us where you want the money to be sent. That way, when the opportunity comes up, you can move within 24 hours, 48 hours. That's a big difference because deals come and go. Like even on this right now, you say you need a million dollars. There's a good chance after today's call in the next 48 hours, the million dollars mm -hmm. will be gone. And if you didn't have your self-directed IRA set up, you're not going to get in that, into that deal. And so this isn't like, you know, you know I'm not saying you got to do it today. I'm saying you probably need to do it this week because yeah. once your money sits, it, it's okay. That's the other thing I was going to say. My money will sit sometimes literally not invested for a month or two. And I'm okay with that because I'm waiting for the next right deal. Because when I make, if you're making 18%, you can handle not making any interest for a month or two waiting for the next best deal rather than being in the stock market, which potentially with all that's going on in today's world, who knows where it'll be next month. Yeah, no, hundred percent agree. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, well, my money either like they, they go extreme. They're like, oh, my money needs to always be invested in something. Right. And so they just like immediately put it in like the wrong thing yeah. or they're super scared. And they're like, no, I don't want my money doing it. Like keep it in, the, keep it in the checking account. Right. It's like, no, the best investors just strategically pick the deals they want to be in. And if you don't know what deal you want to be in, then you pick the person you trust to manage it. Like, that's it. Like, you're either good enough to understand, like, what a deal is, or there's somebody that you trust that you're going to let, you know, manage it for you. Um, so, you know, in the end, right, like Angie's saying, but if it's sitting there, you don't make money. But not making money is better than losing money, you know, just forcing it into something. Right? And having access to the money. There's a lot of value. Maybe you don't make money for a month, like Ryan and I are both saying right now, but you, now you have the access to make a big move. Like think about deals, Ryan. I mean, when you have money and you can make an offer and say, Hey, look, I can close in five days, but but because you can close in five days, you, you ask them for a $25,000 discount rather than closing in 30 or 60 days. I well, mean, it's, that, that's exactly this deal, right? We closed six months ago. We had to close to get the great deal. And so we closed and now we're like, all right, the, the deal's like going really well. Let's take some funds back off the table that we used to get the deal done and let some other people in on the deal now. And that's it. And like, I'll even tell um, you guys, you know, I, I mentioned a bunch of businesses and things like today I was on a call with um, some of our investors, like, you know, another business I have, I started the number one um, real estate NFT project. We were number one in the entire world. And so we invest in real estate together. We invest in businesses together. And I was just showing them a deal um, for a tech company. Uh, this is a SaaS tech company that's changing the music industry. They literally are taking all of the data from radio that nobody else has real access to. It's a monopoly for radio data. It's kind of crazy. And they've built this amazing app that, or not app, well, it's a SaaS app that pretty much 
can tell you whether or not you're going to be a number one song or break the top 40. And it's all the data for a music label and for an artist to know so they can figure out where they're going to put all their resources and what cities and what stations. It's insane. And this is another one that, you know, we're raising a million bucks for. And, you know, it's just like things like this are opportunities. Like we're going to fill this too and it's going to be done and then it's gone, right? So like if your cash wasn't there, it is what it is, you know? And so there's there's this huge thing of like when your cash is on the sidelines, it's not bad as long as you're not, it's not on the sidelines because you're just scared and you're indecisive. It's strategically on the sidelines because you know there's opportunity coming up that, you know, you want it to be available for. You know, if you go throw it in just some crappy deal because you're like, well, it's better than zero. Well, what happens when you get the next opportunity two weeks later, a month later, that was way better, but you don't have the cash anymore. And oh. so, um, you know, that's really what it comes down to. Well, let, 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 I want to break again for a second. I think Claudia, you might have put it here in the chat. Claudia, uh, she oversees all of our new account open business. If you go to Horizon Trust Company, horizontrust.com forward slash Ryan P, set an appointment. That's the first and foremost. If you think you have some kind of retirement account that might qualify, you're not even sure. I saw a lot of questions about asking about 401ks. Um, well, we can answer those questions. If you, if you have a current 401k or you currently work for the government, most likely you can't transfer that over yet till you get, you know, you, you leave that, that job, um, or you get fired or you let go, whatever the case is. Uh, most people I talked to in the last five years are working somewhere new with the new 401k, but still have this old 401k out there. Those 401ks are all available. And that's what I'm talking about where there's over 30 million of those in the United States. There's over a hundred million or 97 million of these IRAs. So if you're in that boat, set an appointment with us. We'll talk about your account, how it works. And if it makes sense, We'll show you how to actually open up a 401k, self-directed 401k for your business. And then you can put away a lot more money. You can borrow against it, et cetera. I don't want to get too deep into that, but I do want to say the process is very simple. Claudia and our team are really good. We set up literally hundreds of accounts every single month, showing people how to get it transferred over in a very, very simple way. So um, uh, last- How well, much, Greg, ahead. how many How many like transactions, like, like how many- billions and things have you guys done? Look, so so our trust company holds over a billion dollars now in assets. Um, we're, we're still small uh, in the scheme of things. We've been around 14 years, um, but we're really boutique. I mean, for us, we process everything within two to three days. And I think that's the most unique thing about our competitors. If you send in and say, hey, look, I want you to transfer. It takes forever, dude. Money, it takes forever. You know, you, I mean, you were you were one of my competitors. Actually, that company you're with, I don't even like to see. You can say, I don't care. That's actually why I started a trust company is because I was, re when I was building my business, I was like, I got to close in this deal. I need the money in two weeks. They yeah. blew my timeline every time. So I was like, this is just too hard. And people yeah. thought my investment sucked. You know, so like right now, for example, if Ryan's like, hey, look, invest in, invest in my deal and in my fund, and let's say 10 of you want to open up accounts and do that, and then I drop the ball, meaning it takes me a month to get your money over here at Horizon Trust, you're actually probably going to think not only do I suck, but Ryan sucks. And so, <laughs> so, so that is, that's actually, I was in Ryan's shoes. And so that's why I was like, I don't suck. It's not my investment. It's this bad trust company. And so that's why I started a trust company. Now it's what I, I thrive and I'm passionate about. And so it's yeah, a lot. And, and, and let me say this too, guys, you know, for those of you who know me um, and have followed me, you know, I don't really like do affiliates. Like I just don't care. Like I, I got my own businesses that I'm focused on and, you know, I've got a million different companies like Brian, like affiliate this and do that and help me like with this. And, you know, your people would love it. And I'm like, nah, dude, like, I'll just do my own thing. I'm good. Um, so when I bring other people to the fold, it's because I know I'm like, Hey, this is a need. And I definitely don't want to start a company for it. You know, my first initial thing is, Hey, should I just start my own version of this? And I can tell you like what they do is, you know, they make a complex thing, very simple. And, they do it quick, like he said. And Greg will tell you, I've had conversations with him. I'm like, hey, here's the deal. Like, if we're going to work together, like, we need yeah. the money quick because a lot of these people are going to want to invest in deals with us. And, you know, we're under the gun and different things and we got to make the deal happen. And so, you know, we got to have a better system to make sure that it all just goes full cycle the right way. And like for me, um, 
I'll tell all of you guys this, you know, whether you came for me or Greg or anything else. Um, at the end of the day, however I can help you win, I'm down with it, right? So if all you do is get your own self-directed and we never do anything together, I'm cool with that. If you invest with me on an apartment deal, dude, I would love that. If you invest with me on a business deal one day, I would love that. If you say, hey, dude, I want to actually start my own business, you know, but I do want to go through your coaching. Amazing. I'm good with whatever. So for me, the first step is really like what Greg said. There is, you know, a two week time frame, which is really fast in this industry. So if you guys book a call with Greg and we already know that we're going to work together because my team is going to contact you too and just say, hey, you know, what would you think of the webinar? What stuck with you? You know, what do you, what is it you're looking to do? You know, there's no pressure on our end. We're just like, hey, how can, like, what, what, what can we do? Right. And you might say, well, I really want to be in that Iowa deal, but I got to wait. We'll say, okay, cool. Like, we'll reserve you a spot. You know, how much do you want to invest with us? All right. It's fine. We know Greg's going to get it done. So we'll mark you for it already. You know, even though we still know you got to go through the process. Um, if you say, hey, you know, this is what we want to do. Like, I'm just really interested in Greg. I'll be like, cool. You know, that's awesome. One day, maybe we'll do something together. So either way, you're going to get great service from Greg, who's going to help you do that transfer and who's going to, you know, help you guys figure out which one's best for your situation. And then you're going to have my team help you figure out, hey, wh what do you want to do once the money's there? You know, how can we help you figure out what's best for you too on that side? And you nailed it, Ryan. And, and and we feel the same way. And this is why I wanted to have you on, Ryan, because we get literally uh, hundreds of people every month of, of, of our thousands that will reach out and be like, can you please just give us, you know, more content, education on what people are doing, how they're having success. And, um, and so when we had the opportunity to have you on just to share this, and this is going to go in our library as well, because we've got lots of investors actually that will call in and be like, okay, my deal paid off. Um, what should I do next? You know, again, since we don't pitch investments, we can put you in our in our investment library. Uh, and when they see your name and your face and what you're up to, they're going to contact you and, and learn more about you. And so, uh, and there is no pressure, like Ryan said. And for those of you that are in the in the boat of not having a retirement account, and uh, think first of all, thanks for sticking through this with us. Uh, <laughs> so second of all, there's money all around you. Don't be discouraged. If you're in that place where banks, you think it's too high of interest rates or it's very difficult to go find money. Everybody around you, 30% of people you know, have a retirement account and could be your partner. Hey, Greg, I, I don't think either of us mentioned this, but this just occurred to me, is that there's probably people on here who, yeah, they don't have a retirement account right now or 401k or anything, but they do need to open one. Can they do that with you to start one and figure out how to start saving on taxes and building it? 100%. In fact, everyone should be doing that. If you don't have a retirement account, which is probably a lot of you, yeah. Open, open one up. I mean, that's what that's what Ryan did a, a few years ago. Yeah. I didn't uh, have one to transfer. I just was like, I want to save on taxes. I need to open one. And you can and, and look, I, people ask me what's the minimum to start with. I would say at minimum is typically five thousand uh, dollars that you can do something with. Um, but you could even do it like the furniture example. We started this uh, this webinar and you could start with thousand dollars. You know, my son, he's 21 years old. He's got, he's, he's had a, a Roth IRA now for two and a half years. Um, I didn't do the thing that I think a lot of parents say they can do. And, and maybe I should have, um, where they set up all their kids Roths at age 14 and put them on payroll and all that. Um, you can do that as long as they're on payroll and open up Roths for them, but do it for yourself. And if you're just sick of that stock market going up and down, control your own money. Nobody cares more about your money than you do. I don't care more about your money than you do. Take control of it. You'll make so much better, I, I think, way better returns. Going from 8 to 12 every year, 4%, believe it or not, over a 10 or 20-year period is millions of dollars. Millions. So, yep. Yep. Um, so look, I, I think we're going to wrap up here. Uh, is there anything else? I have one more question for you, Ryan, but before we wrap up, is there something you want to add? Yeah, I just want to know, first off, I appreciate all you guys for you know coming tonight and, and being a part of this. I think it's going to help you, like I said, no matter what. Um, you know, whether we work together or not, but just so I know, um, put a one in the chat. If you do want to work with us in some kind of way, right. Whether that's, you know, coaching, investing, self-directed. All right, cool. So a ton of you guys want to work with us. That's amazing. So this is the first step. Okay. Um, step one is go to the link that, uh, Greg's team has been putting in the chat. If you fill out that link, 
we're going to get the, your information as well from my team. Okay. And so we're going to contact you and start the process as well. So you're going to simultaneously go through both processes of working on whatever it is you end up doing for your own self-directed, whether you're getting one started, whether you're transferring, you're going to be working with Greg's team on that. Then you're going to be with my team and we're going to figure out whatever's best for you too, whether that's education or investing or, or whatever the case is for your situation. I'm not like pushing you either way. Like we just want to see what's best for you. And so uh, I see a bunch of people are interested in the Iowa deal. I love that. And uh, yeah, like the first step is just registering with Greg's team and we're going to get your data and info from that and hit you up and, um, you know, talk with you this week. So it's going to be quick guys. Like we're not, I don't, I don't waste time, right? Like tomorrow my team is going to reach out and say, Hey, how can we serve you? So that's how we operate. Yeah. And, 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 and our team will talk about fees. We don't hide them. I, one thing that happens, it comes out of your IRA. So you don't have to use a credit card or a check or anything like that. It comes out of your retirement account. Um, it's less than what you're paying now. So it's, it's, it's not a big deal. So look, I know there's a lot of interested people that want to work with Ryan. You can find Ryan obviously on social media as well as myself, uh, but set the appointment at horizontrust.com forward slash Ryan P. We'll set the appointment. We'll go from there. So to end here, Ryan, I like to ask everybody in all my webinars, uh, their sweet, sour and service for this last week. So what was your sweet for the week, the sour for the week and what you did to serve somebody else this last week? Sweet, sour and serve. That, that's an interesting one. Uh, well, I'll end with serve or I'll start with serve um, because I was just in Florida. So I flew, I literally flew from Florida this morning um, here to Colorado, which uh, my wife is serving as a bridesmaid in a wedding. So she's serving that. But I was with Tim Tebow the last three days um, out in Florida, just really getting to understand what he's doing with his Tebow Foundation. And, um, you know, it's amazing just all the the cool stuff they're doing. So um, I think that was kind of like my, that was like serving and sweet. But, uh, you know, I'll, talk, I'll say that's like on the serving side. On the sweet side, um, the family and I were in Disneyland uh, last week on, yeah, I think, yeah, I think within the seven day stretch, we were in Disneyland. We did the VIP tour and that was amazing. Um, just getting to experience that with the family and the sour part. Oh yeah. You know, Doug said I was, I was rooming with Beardy Brandon, Brandon Turner. He's my guy. Um, maybe I'll say that was the sour part having to go have a, have a roomie again. And you know, back to my college and my <laughs> league days when I was playing baseball. But uh, no, yeah, the sour part was I actually got to play the TPC Sawgrass at the Players Championship. And uh, I shot well, I shot a 77. So that was wow. cool. Wow. Um, but, I, you know, I was playing with my friend, John Gordon, who's a uh, a really big author, if some of you guys know him. And watching him was sour on my eyes because he he needs to get some practice in. <laughs> guy but man we're, we're gonna have to work on his game uh well, thanks ryan thanks for sharing look uh i appreciate your time and also being so late also those listening from the east coast uh and west coast at this point so uh thanks another great session you'll be able to listen to this uh afterwards and uh, we look forward to working with you guys cool thanks guys i'll see you later greg appreciate you we'll thanks, be ryan. we'll be in touch to everybody who um registers perfect thanks cool. all see you guys